If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last. Sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the Mormon entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia here, back once again, another edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Uh, well, it's part two of uh, this week's episode, um, so part one will be available at the end of uh, at the end of uh, this video, so let's get right into it. So, let's see, part two, where do we start with this? Right, the Xbox One won't be getting VR support for some reason. Right, so anyway. Right, okay. Right. Microsoft has put plans for VR support for Xbox devices on hold according to an interview with Xbox chief, Xbox's chief marketing officer. Speaking to GameIndustry.biz, CMO Mark Nichols said that the gaming platform doesn't have any plans specific to Xbox consoles in virtual reality or mixed reality. Nichols clarified that Microsoft was rather focusing on VR development on PC and saw mobile as a good scenario for mixed or augmented reality. Our, fo our focus is primarily on experiences you would play on your TV and ultimately we'd like to see those experiences more broadly. Virtual promises. The announcement is the culmination of a gradual retreat over VR plans on the Xbox for the Xbox console. Back in 2016, Xbox chief Phil Spencer told gamers to expect high-end VR experiences on the Xbox One S shortly before Microsoft promised mixed reality content would be on my Xbox devices by 2018. Suffice to say, none of that ended up happening. The hefty technical upgrades are on the Xbox One S and X has certainly made VR support more viable. Though the failure of the Kinect motion control to shift units has likely, well, Kinect motion controller to shift units has likely made the company weary of over committing to additional peripherals through the Xbox platform. Well, maybe VR will be available for the um, next Xbox console. Just need to wait and see what happens. So, anyway, uh, Pokemon Let's Go now, and it's way more than just a Pokemon Go clone. Nintendo's new motion control peripheral, the Pokeball Plus, makes it worth catching them all over again in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. When Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were revealed earlier this year, you could almost feel the wave of disappointment ripple across the internet. After Nintendo's 2017 E3 conference confirmed the, de the development of a core Pokemon RPG for the Nintendo Switch, it was deflating to some to find the eternally popular series first appearance on the platform would instead be a remake of the original Red and Blue games. Even worse, it would be reimagined to be closer to the Pokemon Go game for mobile. Anyone who was panicked by the idea of Pokemon Let's Go should take a deep breath and relax though. As it turns out, Pikachu and Eevee are guiding some of the refreshest and most fun Pokemon games in years. And it's in large part down to the Pokeball Plus controller. To anyone who's ever watched the Pokemon anime, there's a nice little attention to detail with the accessory. It's about the size of a shrunken Pokeball that Ash Ketchum would pull from his belt before expanding it to full Pokemon catching size. Sadly, the real life gadget doesn't change size. Ah, dang it. But it is a miniature marvel in its own right. The Pokeball Plus packs in motion centers, light sensors, lights, and speaker 
along with clever adaptation with a clever adaptation of the original Pokemon games controls. The central button, the white circle, the white circle between the red and white hemispheres of the Pokeball serves as both directional thumbstick and with a click down the A button. Hidden under the red half is another button, easily used with a squeeze of your forefinger, which serves as B. It may seem overly streamlined, but the Game Boy offered the exact same range of controls. Movement on the D-pad plus two input buttons. And that's all you needed. This just condenses it all into one handed a one-handed wireless remote. Well played on the accessibility front. But what of the Pokemon but what of the Pokemon Let's Go game itself? Unfortunately, the build Nintendo provided only allowed players to wander around Viridian Forest, an early section from the original games, so impressions are fairly limited. However, it looks great adapting the exact layout of the area from the 1997 games. 1996 if it was uh, due to it being released in Japan first. My point stands. But upgrading the visuals and designs to match the modern anime models for humans and Pokemon alike. Your version, Pikachu or Eevee, rides on your shoulder, but you can also have another Pokemon walking behind you. A nod to 1998's Pokemon Yellow. Walking Pokemon are always in scale, representing the official height in the Pokedex. For instance, Charmander will come up to your character's waist, whilst its larger evolution, THE ALMIGHTY CHARIZARD WILL BE BIGGER THAN YOU! Like in the mobile game, you'll now see Pokemon on the screen, wandering around long grass rather than having to deal with random encounters. However, unlike on your phone, you'll have a few clues as to the quantities of the Pokemon before you engage with them. If you have a red swirl floating around them, expect them to be bigger than average for that species, whereas a blue swirl means they're smaller than usual. Okay. This can help. This, uh, this can help in picking out wild Pokemon, but either way, simply walk into them and you'll have a chance to catch them. As with Pokemon Go, there's no combat with catchable creatures, just a menu allowing you to offer them various berries to make them easier to catch or to switch to more powerful Pokeballs. The likelihood of a successful catch is, successful catch is indicated by the colour of the shrinking conce concentric, ring, uh, concentric rings. And the smaller those rings are when you connect a Pokeball, the more likely you are to get a great or excellent response. Catching is as simple as selecting get ready and making a throwing gesture with the Pokeball. A surprisingly fun moment will that will likely fulfill a childhood ambition for some. The peripheral will vibrate and if the catch is successful, a light around the central button turns green. Hold it to your ear and you'll hear the Pokemon you've just caught making itself at home. That's pretty cool. I like that. That is pretty cool. One improvement over Pokemon Go is that you won't need to endlessly catch the same Pokemon over and over to earn candy for evolution purposes. Instead, like the core Pokemon games, your squad will earn experience points for every successful catch. And from battles against other Pokemon trainers. These encounters are pure traditional Pokemon gameplay. Turn-based combat where you select your attack move from a list of four, switch to another Pokemon in your squad of six, or use an item. The menu-based system lends itself well to the Pokeball Plus. Although I did notice clicking clicking in on the central button can sometimes also register as moving it as a thumbstick, making it a little too easy to highlight and select the wrong option. With the preview session limited to only the Viridian Forest, there was no way to see if gym battles differ at all. But the familiarity of regular encounters bodes well. Battles also reveal another benefit to the simplicity of the Pokeball Plus. It's perfect for players with hand-related disabilities and limited dex dexterity. Like I said, good job on the accessibility front. And if even throwing the Pokeball is difficult for a player, then controls can be switched so pressing the A button counts as a throw too. Whether by accident or intent, this is a great feature making Pokemon Let's Go accessible to more players. Younger players may also find a simple but tactile, 
attack tool controls easier to get to grips with. Younger, uh, with Nintendo structuring the hands-on session around the Pokeball Plus, I wasn't able to get a feel for how it plays using either the Switch Pro Controller or the Joy-Cons. Though it seems reasonable to imagine flicking a Joy-Con will have the same result as a throwing a Pokeball. There was also no sign of how in of how integration integrate how integration with Pokemon Go on mobile will work in practice beyond what Nintendo has shown in its reveal videos. We know that you'll be able to transfer one Pokemon from your phone to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch games via the Pokeball Plus, placing them in an area called the Go Park. What the benefit of this is, if anything beyond the cosmetic and if anything beyond the cosmetic and the chance to interact with them remains unknown. Yet with the modern anime-inspired visuals, intuitive Pokeball controls, and an encounter and battle system that combines the best of the classic Pokemon games and Pokemon Go, Let's Go proves to be a meaningful evolution of the series. Even though long-term players will be traipsing around the Kanto region and catching the original 151 Pokemon again, there are enough new tricks here to make the journey worthwhile. And that's why I'm going to be getting... That's why I'm going to be getting a Nintendo Switch later down the road. And my word, I'm excited to get it. Um, a couple of articles on Fallout 76. Uh, first off, it's going to be playable on Xbox uh, Xbox One first. Hold up! The beta will be on Xbox One first. Fallout 76 is the... Fallout 76, the anticipated new spin-off of the popular RPG Fallout series, will be getting a beta before its release. Legendary game creator Todd Howard confirmed this during E3 today. But today we learn more about more details on Fallout 76's FAQ. The beta will start first on Xbox One and afterwards on PC and PlayStation 4. This is what this is what the official tweet says. But there's the beta the beta the beta will be available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and on PC. Stay tuned for the exact timing for each platform here and and at Fallout on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please note that the beta for Xbox One will begin first, followed by the other platforms. There is still a mysterious aura about what Fallout 76 will be like, despite getting several trailers and Bethesda explaining their vision for the spin-off title this recent E3. Probably stemming from leaks and rumours making the rounds on the internet before the official announcement, gamers and journalists dove deep into speculatory territory, with, with little and unconfirmed info they had. Since the Fallout franchise is a huge name in gaming, it didn't take long for widespread guesswork getting so out of hand that the publisher Bethesda had to put a primitive official word out only a few days before E3 started properly. The early announcement trailer we reported earlier on served both as an official word on the matter and to further ramp up the hype among fans. It handily succeeded in that, since E3, since Bethesda's E3 conference highlight was undoubtedly Fallout 76. Let's not forget the Elder Scrolls 6 being announced. We learned that Fallout 76 is going to be the biggest Fallout game sporting the biggest map ever and that it would take place prior to all the existing Fallout games. Set not too long after the nuclear war took place, it's likely to feature the freshest take on Bethesda's cult, 
post-apocalyptic roleplay game as well. But what really is going to set Fallout 76 apart is the, the inclusion of PvP and co-op multiplayer components and a focus on survival gameplay. This was never seen in either Fallout or the Elder Scrolls series and fans have been clamouring the developers for the ability to play with their friends and against other real people. This could easily make Fallout 76 the biggest and most successful Fallout game to date. So it comes as little surprise that one of the major console platform holders managed to snag some form of exclusivity. Even if it is only an early start for the beta, it could help the Xbox One to widen its player base. Take note, Sony. Now I'm going to try and exaggerate this a little bit. How many players does Fallout 76 support? Well, I say let's find out. Unlike previous games in the RPG series, Fallout 76 will not have any traditional NPCs. Instead, the game will be always online and every non-robot character that players come across will be controlled by another human player, who is exploring and playing in the world as they are. However, despite Bethesda's confirmation that Fallout 76 will only be populated with human-controlled players, new information suggests that players won't bump into as many people as they may have expected. Okay. In a recent no-clip documentary about the game Fallout 76 project lead Jeff Gardner revealed that the current form of the game supports about 24 to 32 players per server. The developer also confirmed that players will be able to see what other players where other players are on the map. Following Gardner's comments, one Fallout fan, Fallout 76 fan on Reddit, did the math to figure out just how frequently players will come across one another in the game. If the map if the Fallout 76 map is four times the size of Fallout 4, and the Fallout 4 map is approximately 87 square kilometers, then that makes the Fallout 76 map roughly 350 square kilometers in size, according to that calculation. A person would be 56 times more likely to encounter another player in a game like Fortnite, where there are 100 players running around than in Fallout 76. Though this, though this metric doesn't account for the fact that Fortnite that the Fortnite map gets smaller as the match continues. Hmm. Interesting. On the one hand, the news that Fallout 76 won't be so heavily populated will be good news for those concerned about griefing. The game does allow players to lose, use nukes on one another, and so if players are bumping into each other all the time, aggravating one another, it could potentially lead to a constant state of nuclear warfare on the server. Oh my word, that would be hilarious to see! Many will also be hoping that the small number of supported players will lead to less technical issues, while Bethesda is hoping to identify and fix any problems with the Fallout 76 beta. Even a beta may not account for all of the things that a huge number of players would get up, get up to on one server at launch. But on the other hand, would-be Fallout 76 players who were relishing the chance to make new friends in the game may be disappointed that the server size isn't all that big. While Bethesda's Todd Howard made those comments about no NPCs, fans had expected something on the scale of, MM of an MMO. There's nothing to suggest that the game won't be as entertaining because of the smaller size, but it will come as a surprise to some fans. Fallout 76 will be released on November 14th for PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Just to be clear guys, 
while I'm recording this, I'm missing the England game. Is it worth it though? Yeah. Because I feel that doing this takes a bit more priority. Talking of Xbox. Crackdown 3's original developer isn't working on the game. Okay. Now, there's no denying that things have been uncertain for Crackdown 3's development cycle since its reveal back in 2014, but it was finally announced to be launching in February 2019. It is now known what possibly caused the game to be in development for so long. The potential reason for the delays with Crackdown 3 has to do with change a change in developers. When the game was first announced back in 2014, it was stated that the series creator Dave Jones was attached to the project. He and two companies he helped found, found Cloud Gene and Regent Games, were working on the title. Cloud Gene focused on the cloud technology that was responsible for the game's destruction elements, while Regent handled development. In January of this year, Cloud Gene became part, a part of Epic Games, the studio behind Battle Royale, Juggernaut, Fortnite. And Jones himself is no longer with Regent Games either. He also joined Epic, where he helps with their cloud technology as well as being an esports strategist for the company. Sumo Digital is now, is now the primary studio in charge of Crackdown 3's development. Booty, however, did not state whether or not the game technology, the cloud te technology Cloud Gene, created to power the destructibility is still in the game. As of right now, the element has been stated to only be available in Crackdown 3's multiplayer. Many are now wondering if the current build of the game will have the same level of destructibility that left many in awe when an early version of multiplayer was shown in a 2015 Gamescom demo. While news of a, char while news of a change in the development may seem concerning to some, other fans of the series will probably probably happy to know the game has an ex expected release window. Some games don't always make it to release after a change in developers is made. This wasn't the only news to come out at E3 about the game, though Microsoft, as, though as Microsoft also showed off a new gameplay trailer at its press conference. Crackdown 3 is expected to release in February 2019 for PC and Xbox One. Okie dokie. Right. New Minecraft crossplay trailer throws shade at Sony. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. <clears throat> right. Time to break some Sony hearts, I think. <clears throat> Sony has been taking a lot of flack recently for its unrelenting, unrelenting stance on crossplay but the company has shown no signs of backing down so far. Nintendo and Microsoft have added to the pressure. Whether intentional or not, I'm gonna go with intentional. With a Minecraft crossplay trailer aimed at highlighting the joys of inter-console gaming that Sony continues to deny its fans. Criticisms of Sony's refusal to allow crossplay have been mounting for some time, but the situation has reached boiling point recently when Sony not only blocked the feature on the immensely popular Fortnite, but also prevented anyone 
who played the game on PS4 from using that account on a different console. Oh! Ouch! Ow! That is brutal! Since then, Sony has faced a huge backlash from fans of Fortnite and PS4 alike. And no wonder! Which was not resolved by Sony's statement in response. The official Xbox UK Twitter was quick to capitalise on the widespread discontent, poking fun at Sony by asking Nintendo UK, Wanna play some Fortnite later? <laughs> A similar sentiment appears to have motivated Nintendo's trailer for Minecraft Crossplay, which can be seen below. Let's watch the trailer right now. So. Let's have a look. Better together. <sighs> After Microsoft's conference at E3, a good friend of mine, James, said that Sony should be quaking in their boots right now. And I don't blame them. The trailer shows the trailer shows off the complete unity between Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One brands, with controllers for both consoles held by players who join forces in a Minecraft world. The signature red and green colours of the consoles divide the screen in half with words with words create together, explore together, survive together, better together appearing on screen. It's hard not to view this emphasis on in-game cooperation as also referencing the cooperation between Microsoft and Nintendo, which in turn highlights Sony's absence from the partnership. Ouch! <laughs> Regardless of whether the trailer was intended this way, it's certainly the way it has been received. Almost, almost every comment on the YouTube video references Sony's crossplay stance in some way, while it is being circulated on Twitter as a masterful piece of industry shade throwing. You know what? Let's read some of these comments because this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Let's have a look at some of these comments. This is a brave new world. The console wars are finally coming to an end. Remember when Sony PS4 was on top of their game by taking on the Xbox One by doing pro-consumer things? Looks like Sony forgot about that. Oh! This makes me want Master Chief or Cuphead in Smash Bros even more. Yes! Please, Phil Spencer, make it happen! Fantastic. Divided we fall, united we stand. Oh, boom! Sony PS. If only Sony PS4 could stop being scared to crossplay. Glad to see so many positive comments. Dear Sony, get your together. Marvel Infinity War was the most ambitious crossover. <gasps> yes! <laughs> this is a. Oh, this is brilliant. Right. One second, folks. 12 seconds later. <laughs>
Mm. Uh. Right. Marvel. Infinity War is the most ambitious crossover event in history. Nintendo and Microsoft. Guys, hold our beards. This isn't a beer, by the way, folks. Just, but just, you guys know the meme. No, that's a case. Of, yeah, hold our beers. This is why I only have an Xbox One and a Switch. Microsoft and Nintendo will play together, and I can play games on either of the consoles that don't appear on the other. Hey, Rocket League, kaboom! Screw you, Sony. No one needs you, and you, and your you can't play with us mentality. <laughs> so that's why project the Project X was called like this. NX does not equal new experience. NX equals Nintendo and Xbox. <laughs> oh snap. Friday night. Hey uh, Nintendo. Hey Sony, you sure? Hey Sony, you sure you don't want to join in? Microsoft, don't bother waiting for an answer. He thinks he's too good to play with us. Nintendo. Sighs. I thought we'd be getting through to them. Microsoft? I'll get it. It's probably the others. Looks through the people. What's the password? PC, mobile, and VR. We come bearing pizza and drinks. Microsoft? Uh, close enough. The future is here. I don't play Minecraft, but I love this. Sony, survive alone. Thank you, Nintendo. I love you since I was five years old. In brackets, I am 19 years old now. So basically, during the GameCube era. Well played, Nintendo. Nintendo and Microsoft building bridges while Sony hides in the bushes, grunting to itself. I'm about to switch back. <gasps> oh! <laughs> 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 I'm about to switch Xbox. <laughs> USA and Soviet Union meeting for the first time to fight together against the Third Reich. Colorized circa 1941. Banjo confirmed for... Banjo-Kazooie confirmed for Smash Bros. Ultimate as DLC. PLEASE MAKE IT HAPPEN, PLEASE! Reading the comments is very heartwarming. Seeing Nintendo and Xbox fans together. But meanwhile, thousands of miles away. Some, SOME, actually MOST Sony fans are bragging about their exclusives. If only Sony will cooperate. The gaming community will be better 100%. Xbox plus Nintendo equals future gaming. These are just over the last two days, folks. I just saw an Xbox controller and a logo on... I just saw an Xbox controller and the new... <laughs> oh, I won't. I just saw an Xbox controller and the logo on a Nintendo commercial. I feel a warmth in my heart. <laughs> Everyone is here! Except Sony. <laughs> Guys, we need to write this down on a history book. Thanks for reading. Nintendo does what Sony don't. Oh! Oh! They switched it around instead of Sega. Oh my word, Genesis does. 16 bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo. Oh, how times have changed. This is bigger than the civil rights movement. <laughs> Remember when Sony made that How To Lend A Game To Your Friends trailer? Oh, how far we've come. <laughs> For PS4 players, it's gonna be Create Alone, Explore Alone, Survive Alone, Better Alone. Ouch. Everyone would always tell me that PlayStation has the most powerful console and that PlayStation and that PlayStation has the best games. Well, now Nintendo has the most powerful console and they're coming out with some pretty good exclusives and just opened up for more studios to make them. And Nintendo has some very good games. And Nintendo and Cross, 
and Nintendo and Xbox have cross. So eat that, Sony! Right. Screw Sony, I'm all about this. United, we are strong! Banjo Kazooie for Smash. Yes, 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 yes. Phil Spencer, I hope you re I hope you see these comments. Please make Banjo please give Nintendo Banjo Kazooie in Smash, please! Survive together, Nintendo's like Microsoft, there 2018. Amazing! Nintendo and Microsoft are helping to break barriers. It's a great moment to be a gamer. At this point, they're just rubbing crossplay in Sony's face. Laughing so hard that tears start streaming down your face emoji. <laughs> Sony, you are Sony, you are a disappointment. But Nintendo and Microsoft are perfect. Nintendo plus Microsoft equals death of Sony. Ooh. Oh boy. Cool. Now let's get Banjo Kazooie in Smash. Fire a warning shot across Sony's nose. Careful, you idiot. I said across her nose, not up it. <laughs> Nintendo, you have done so many good choices lately. Keep it up. Not like that, <coughs> Xbox made Xbox made a Xbox made a peace treaty with Nintendo. Cool. My two favorite game platforms teaming up. That's a dream come true. Well done, Microsoft and Nintendo. Duh, Nintendo is red and Xbox is green. It's like Mario and Luigi, and together they're great. <laughs> That's a thumbs up from me. That is brilliant. What about Mario and Bowser? Oh, that's a good shout. Nah, Bowser's Sony. I just realized on my third time watching that this guy in the red represents Nintendo and the girl in the green represents Microsoft. Hopefully in the future, they will be a person in blue. Mmm. My point still stands. The point stands. That is massive. That's a massive screw you to Sony. With the way pressure is mounting for both consumers and competitors, Sony could be forced to respond in a more meaningful way soon. The ex-CEO of Sony Online has claimed that the refusal to allow cross-platform play is motiv motivated by money. Hello, I like money. But if the PS4's competitors continue to offer a much desired service that Sony doesn't, the question of just how economically viable it is to block crossplay will surely come into doubt. Right. Fake Fortnite Android apps spread across the internet. Ooh boy. Fake, for fake Fortnite Android apps are spreading around the internet even though the game has not officially been released for the platform. Videos on YouTube with links to scam versions of the popular game have been viewed millions of times according to security experts. None of the fake apps has made it onto Google Play Store, but they are easy to find on search engines. According to one security firm, the apps look legitimate. Hmm, yeah. You do tend to expect those sort of things. Talking about one particular fake app, Nathan Collier, an analyst from security firm Malwarebytes, said it's so realistic that some may recognize it from the Apple iOS version. 
by stealing the icon directly from Apple, it could... How could it not look real? Yeah, just a simple copy and paste job. In fact, the app redirects users to a browser, asking them to download a number of other apps in order to play the game. Scammers are paid each time someone downloads an app from the website. Mr. Collier said, the bad news is that no matter how many apps you download, the game never unlocks because it never existed within the malicious app in the first place. Our advice, be patient. If you wait for the official release by Epic Games in the game's Google Play Store this summer, you won't have to spend the ensuing months cleaning malware off your Android. YouTube removal. Fortnite's most famous battle royale mode has more than 125 million players worldwide. It means there are lots of people eagerly awaiting its debut on Android phones due, to, due later this summer. With many using such search terms as how to install Android or Fortnite for Android in Google and YouTube. According to security firm ESET, many of the videos on YouTube have been viewed millions of times. It warned that some of the fake apps could be malicious, attempting to steal a user's money or mining for cryptocurrency using their device. A YouTube spokesperson told tech news website CNET that it had um, it, that it had machine learning systems to detect and remove millions of spam videos and that it removes such videos when we are made aware of them. Hmm. Right. May 2018 NPD, PlayStation 4 outsells Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Ooh. That may not be the case for much longer, ladies and gentlemen. The PlayStation 4 was the top selling console hardware platform in May in the United States, according to the industry tracking firm, the NPD Group. But the story is still that console is still that console hardware and software sales are thriving across all of the big three. Sony Interactive Entertainment, Microsoft, and Nintendo all broke their own records for this generation when it comes to unit sales. Sony's PlayStation 4, Microsoft's Xbox One, and Nintendo's Switch all achieved all-time unit sales highs for a, for a main month. NPD analyst Matt Piscatella said, Previous highs were May 2016 for PlayStation 4, May 2015 for Xbox One, and May 2017 for Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Sony continues to pull ahead, however, because of its breadth of options with low price with the low price PS4 Slim that comes in a variety of makes and models. The powerful PS4 Pro and regular exclusive games releases like God of War and Detroit Become Human. The PlayStation is the best selling hardware platform of 2018 year to date, but on an SKU basis, which means a single console package or bundle, the Nintendo Switch 32GB Neon system was still the best seller in both units and dollar sales. The continued strength of console sales in the US strains the notion that the next generation consoles are imminent. Microsoft told fans that Xbox hardware team is working on a new, X, a new box at the Electronic Entertainment Expo trade show in Los Angeles last week and fans are operating under the assumption that games like Cyberpunk 2077, The Elder Scrolls 6, and Starfield would require new consoles to truly shine. But as long as PS4 and Xbox One are continuing to set records, Sony and Microsoft are both unlikely to rush any into anything new before they have to. Okie dokie. Well. Wow. I think safe. All right, guys. Uh, I've got a lot of sport to catch up on. Coming to think of it, because I've got the French Grand Prix. I've got this. In I've got the England game. I've got to do this podcast. I've got Tom and Jerry to do. Oh boy, it's going to be a busy day for me today. World War Z could be the next best licensed video game. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see. <clears throat> Saber Interactive's World War Z just might be the next best licensed video game. We went hands on with World War Z and it surpassed all expectations. Hmm. Okie dokie. 
I'll be honest, when I first saw the trailer for World War Z during the 2017 Game Awards, I wasn't very impressed with what they initially showed off of the third person shooter. In a world where zombies are hitting ev hitting the market every couple of months, or so it seems, it's a tough feat to stand out of the pack. After playing the game for about 30 minutes during E3 2018, I'm happy to say that I couldn't have been more wrong about World War Z. So many zombies. So many zombies. Immediately when jumping into the game, I was impressed by the high quality renders and animations of the characters in the menu screen. Luckily, me being impressed didn't end there. The game's world is beautifully realised, and I was I was only able to play in a decayed New York City. Gee, because we haven't seen New York City in a post-apocalyptic setting before. But the amount of attention to detail made it obvious to me that the studio is passionate about this project. When walking through New York, you witness some stellar environment storytelling, and it was awesome seeing the crowds of zombies in the distance. The developer confirmed that there are various different types of locations, so I can't wait to see what other environments I'll be able to blast through hordes of zombies in. Right. So basically, just from that alone, the point stands that it's going to be a good game. Right. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey now, and where to begin with this one? Ubisoft promises tons of content, places to explore, and stories to experience. Just make sure it's not in a season pass. Assassin's Creed Odyssey became notorious before E3 2018 even began, whether it was rumours regarding its setting, merchandise leaking its name, or gameplay footage leaking before its reveal. Regardless, the actual game itself looks pretty neat and continues the action RPG approach set forth by Assassin's Creed Origins. More importantly, it presents another enormous world to get lost in. Gaming Vault had a chance to speak to game director Scott Phillips at E3 2018 and asked about the overall size of the map. He responded that it's a bigger map overall, the bigger map, the biggest map we've ever built. It's got a lot of sea, of course, because we've brought back seamless naval. So there's a lot to ex lot of area to explore on the land and on the water. It's a huge map filled with tons of content, places to explore, people to discover, stories to experience, and quests as well. We got a peak of naval combat with numerous boats, the ability to hire almost anyone to your crew for different benefits, and even ramming into other ships to cleave them in half. Of course, it wouldn't be an action RPG without a solid progression system. Fortunately, the development team seems to be following the same formula set forth in Assassin's Creed Origins. We built our own ba we built our own based around the same lines as Origins. We got 50 levels of progression. As you kill enemies, you'll learn certain types of as you, as you get certain types of, if you do get certain types of assassination, you'll get, if you do a certain type of assassin, as you kill enemies, as you get certain types of, if you do a certain type of assassination, you'll get more experience. As you discover locations or complete locations or complete quests, you're going to get more experience points. As you get more experience points, you get more levels, and those levels give you access to more abilities and those abilities change the way you play the game. So it's constantly progressing. That doesn't mean the game will become a cakewalk though. Those new abilities will be critical when it comes to deeper areas in the game. And then the world itself is reacting to you. So we scaled the world behind you so you can feel a sense of progression constantly, but you're constantly challenged by new areas. So you feel peaks and valleys where you're, where you're ahead and then you're behind but the game is always interesting. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is out on October 5th for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. I might actually try that out. Right. Nintendo drops the ban hammer on Switch Pirates. Ooh, 
good eve or something for fun. Right, let's see. With the recent developments in the Nintendo Switch hacking scene, along with the release of Team Executor's mod chip solution for the Switch, Nintendo has apparently begun taking action against users who go online with non-legitimate or pirated copies of games. Team Executor Team Executor, a well-known hacking group among the Nintendo Switch homebrew community, released their long-anticipated modern solution, which launched on the 18th of June, giving users the ability to play backed-up cartridge dumps of various Switch titles. Obviously, due to the nature of the matter, Nintendo has made steps in order to ensure that anyone who goes online with a pirated or copied title will be met with a swift ban, preventing the use of online services. Reports have been struggling that, that in some instances Nintendo has opted to ban the copied cartridge itself rather than the console. This is possible due to pirated titles containing identical certificates or identification serials from the original cartridge dump. The error code in question is 0x1f727c-2124-4025 according to the renowned Switch hacker and Twitter user Skyers M. Hmm. In other words, pirating games is always a lose-lose situation, and users should always support the developers by purchasing the great titles available on platforms such as the Nintendo Switch. Fortunately, piracy is only a small facet of the potential that he homebrew can have on the Switch. Team Executive, with Team Executive's modern solution also allowing the users to simplify, simply run homebrew applications, opening up a homebrew scene to a larger audience. Nintendo has yet to comment on the alleged banning, nor even acknowledge the release of Team Executive's exploits. Right. Let's see. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 goes backwards compatible on Xbox One. Goody! Goody, 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 goody gumdrops. Well. We need a buzz kill your friends, Activision. We want Modern Warfare 2! We want no Russian! Yes, I know it's a controversial mission, but come on! Stop giving us stuff we don't want! Last generation, Call of Duty was the biggest franchise in gaming. While it still retains a healthy position in sales, some feel the quality of the series has dropped since the ending of since ending the Modern Warfare trilogy. Luckily, players can revisit the glories of the second of with two thirds of the Modern Warfare saga now available on Xbox One. Today. Luckily, players can revisit the glory days of the da now available on Xbox One. Today, Call of Duty Today, Call of Duty Modern Warfare joins the extensive Modern Warfare 3 joins the extensive 360 back, Xbox 360 backwards compatible library to all of our surprise. Well, it's hardly surprising because Activision do not give us what we want. Interestingly enough, Microsoft and Activision have totally skipped out, skipped over the highly requested Modern Warfare 2. No, 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 I don't blame Microsoft, I blame Activision. 
over the highly requested Modern Warfare 2, signaling that the rumoured remaster could be inbound next year. And then they're gonna make the original Modern Warfare 2 backwards compatible anyway, making the remaster completely pointless! We got a remaster for the first Modern Warfare back in 2016 with the release of Infinite Warfare, if, with the, uh, the release of Infinity Ward's Infinite Warfare not too long ago. Microsoft made the original Xbox 360 version backwards compatible, so we're just missing that highly requested middle chapter, which is hopefully coming in 2019 as rumoured. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is available now for $15 on the Xbox Store if you don't already own it, but if you own the digital version, it'll be ready to install in your library, or you can insert your disc to play it. Modern Warfare 3 picks up directly after Modern Warfare 2, with the world on the brink of World War 3, a rogue group of special ops soldiers formerly known as Task Force 141, go on the hunt for Russian terrorist Makarov, who continues to bring the world to its knees. As you go on a globetrotting adventure, you'll uncover startling revelations, Play as Americans op American operatives defending their home front as Russians invade New York City. Gee, because we haven't seen that a million times before. And attempt to bring order to the world in single player mode. You can also play a co-op mode, which sees the return of Spec Ops missions and a new wave-based survival mode. Basically Horde mode. Brilliant. Multiplayer is also incredibly refined with new weapons, kill streaks, and special perks, and rewards for team players. Modern Warfare 3 released to, to a stellar score of 88 on Metacritic and was one of the biggest releases of 2011. Whether you're a long-time fan or a newcomer, you should definitely make time to revisit Modern Warfare 3. As if. I ain't playing Modern Warfare. Right, now, last piece of news before we get into the points and trophies. And I've been going for... Ooh, just over an hour. Excellent. Right, don't have a Nintendo Switch? You can play Pokemon Quest for free on your phone starting next week. Game Freak's free to play spin off arrives on iOS and Android on June 27th. Ooh, just a few days from now. Woohoo! Pokemon Quest was announced for Nintendo Switch last month, but next week the free to play action game finally makes it onto mobile devices too. It'll appear on the iOS App Store and Android Google Play Store on June 27th. This new Pokemon title, developed by Game Freak, lets players explore the island of Tumble Cube with their team of cute cube shaped characters known as. Pokexel said Shigeru Omori, director at Game Freak, when the game was announced. Players will be able to personalize their Pokemon and develop a strong bond with their Pokemon friends while battling their way through the adventure. With the simple touchscreen controls, Pokemon Quest is a game that Pokemon fans of all ages can pick up and play. The game, as, the game has you battling different stages around the world, using three Pokemon, and earning ingredients, XP, and power stones. The in-game currency takes the form of PM tickets that can be spent to help increase your storage of stones and Pokemon, or on cosmetic items. Microtransactions range from $2.99 for a special power stone to $30 for the Expedition 3 Pack Bundle. Save data for your Nintendo Switch version won't transfer to your mobile, so dedicated Pokemon trainers should bear that in mind. Right. 30 achievements, 1,000 gamer score, and that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep. Points and trophies. In part one, and this on show should be easy enough to do, should be easy enough to 100% so I can get to the ever so elusive 1000 GAMER SCORE! Let's go through the achievements for Gravel. Three seconds in heaven. Perform a jump which lasts at least three seconds. 410 GAMER SCORE. 40 wheels for me. Unlock 10 new vehicles from the basic game. 10 GAMER SCORE. Full marks, obtain three stars in a career event, 10 gamer score. Hello world, complete an online race, 10 gamer score. In front of everyone, finish first in a wild rush, 10 gamer score. 
Just a warning shot, complete a special episode, 10 gamer score. Online champion, complete 10 online races, 10 gamer score. Promoted, reach level 10, 10 gamer score. Survive, finish first in an elimination, 10 gamer score. The fans are warming up, finish first in a stadium circuit, 10 gamer score. Timekeeper, obtain a time in time attack mode. That's a lot of times in the time there. 10 gamer score. Top of the class, finish first in a speed cross, 10 gamer score. Winner, finish first in a cross country, 10 gamer score. Greenway, complete a smash up race hitting only green signs. Ooh, 20 gamer score, that should be easy enough. Always in the lead, finish first in a head to head race, 30 gamer score. The green wave is 20 gamer score by the way, sorry. Garage nearly full. Unlock 20 new vehicles from the basic game. 30 game score. Like a train, maintain high speed for 40 consecutive seconds. No pressure. 30 game score. Woo woo! All aboard the hype train! Perfect landing. Perform at least three perfect landings. 30 game score. Qualified. Reach level 25. 30 gamer score. Reckless Drifter. Sustain a drift for at least 7 seconds. 30 gamer score. Super fast. Reach 142 miles an hour, which is 230 kilometers an hour. 30 gamer score. The Graduate. Reach level 50 for 30 gamer score. The new off road master. Become the new off road master. That's what it says in the tin. 30 gamer score. The real boss. Complete all the special episodes. 30 gamer score. I believe I can fly. Complete any track with a total of six seconds flying. 80 gamer score. Beautiful outside. Unlock all the liveries in the basic game. 90 gamer score. Globetrotter completes a race in every different location of the basic game. Showman. <laughs> Obtain all the stars in the off-road master's career mode for 90 gamer score. I said the Globetrotter completes a race in every different location of the basic game. 90 gamer score. All in. Ah, even gravel is. Hashtag all in. That's a, that's a good one for you wrestling fans out there. Unlock all the vehicles in the basic game for 100 gamer score. And passport control. Unlock all the tracks in the basic game for 100 gamer score. So there you go, 30 achievements, 1000 gamer score. Will I 100% this? I'm gonna give it a bash and test that theory. In the meantime, I will see you guys very soon for Tom and Jerry Sins. Yes, it's Sunday, I know. But like I said, I've got two episodes for you guys, so. It's only gonna be a matter of time. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Part one on the left, playlist on the right. I'll see you guys for Tommy Jerry Sins later. In the meantime, see you all. Have a fantastic day. Peace out and stay pink.